Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear listener, dear viewer, my name is Mumpulu Kiliruma Mohobe, your host of this wonderful show, Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. Uh, we always come to you with wonderful guests, entrepreneurs uh, who come here to share experiential knowledge. Today I'm coming with, um, I'm, 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 my guest is Malebo Homana Kota, and she's here to share on the issue of barcoding. But I always prefer that my guests um, you know, introduce themselves and introduce the subject. Go ahead, uh, Malaboha, and tell the viewer who you are and what it is we're going to talk about. Okay, good morning, viewers. My name is Malaboha Monakosi. Mm. Uh, basically, we are going to talk about barcoding. How is it very important for your business? How can you increase your market base? Just the basic things that you need to know about barcode. Okay, for us to get to there, we need to know who you are and what your background is. Um, can you share that with the viewer? Okay, my name is is a young lady who was born in Tidlamulumu village and I got married to a wonderful husband, a wonderful man in Mangkodi, Kopatengara Maidi. So basically, I'm a graduate a Bachelor of Arts in Humanities and also a postgraduate diploma in Education. I'm currently studying for Masters in Archives and Records Management. And we started this business called Bayern Legacy in 2011. But Bayern what? Bayern Legacy. Yes. But before it was operating as a covenant branding and distribution services. And then we changed the name to Bayern Legacy. And I think it was five years back. So, but for this barcoding bus business, we've been in operation since 2011. And we have been helping Botswana to, you know, to market, to, to, you know, to sell their products because if you could recall, you can't sell your products to retailers without a barcode. You can't export without a barcode. So we are going to talk about the importance of barcode so that you as a manufacturer, as a supplier of products, you are in a good space to sell to retailers to, to increase your market base. Can you just start off right from the basics and explain what a barcode is exactly? Barcode is solely you know, used for identification and also for tracing of products. So for example, as individual, we have what you call identity numbers. Mm. So my identity number is different from the next person. So, so if, in, in terms of if people need to know information about you, they just you know, search you through your identity number. So this applies to barcoding. So with barcoding, you're able to, you know, to trace who the owner of the product is. If, for example, if a retailer you know, needs to, you know, to restock, he knows what to do because that barcoding is able, able to trace back to the owner, able to trace back to the, who, who, what the product is and, you know, just basic information about the product. So By barcoding, you refer to the thing that uh, when you are buying, say, at supermarket, when you get to the teal, they run it through like this. Is that what the barcode is? Yes, uh, barcode is that, uh, that symbol, mm. yeah, you know, that line symbol. Mm. So it, normally in here around here, we use 600 because Botswana, we don't have our own number. So we, use, we share our number with uh, South Africa. So our numbers that we share is, is start with 600, 6,000, sorry. And, mm. and then depending what the kind of products, then the numbers, you know, they follow like that. So basically, barcode, we have, we have different types of barcode. We have what you call EN8. EN8 is basically the barcode that has eight numbers. It's normally used for small products. Like? So, like maybe small Vaseline. Mm. Just a small product that could not be able to, you know, to have that 30 numbers fit in the packaging. Mm. And also we have what you call, so it has eight digits, mm. that eight, eight. And then we have eight, 13, which is normally, you know, Commonly used. Yeah, we'll go to details uh, in a moment, time. but okay. in a moment, what I'm interested in is how you acquired the skill mm -hmm. to be a barcoding expert yes. and how that came about. 
years while I was doing year two at University of Botswana, you know, my mentor, Rana Mohabi, you know, he, he used to tell us about what you call environmental scanning. So with environmental scanning, you're able to know what is the what the market needs and you know be able to provide solution for that. So I was branding water, you know, custom branding water for people. Maybe if you have a wedding, you want to brand water according to how you you know to whatever the information that you want i was doing that that business so then one time as i was doing that somebody says no i want my water with a barcode and i was like what is a barcode so mm -hmm. that's when i started you know using my research skills from university that i'm able to research on the barcoding and i was able to understand and then identify you know the the, the, the suppliers in south africa so who are dealing with barcode and was able to get in contact with them and you know the rest, you know, it continue like that. Is it something that has to be licensed for you to start barcoding? No, barcoding, you can't just do a number, a random number mm. for barcoding. We have what you call international database. Mm. So with international database, for example, if you come to us that you need a barcode, we're going to need uh, your company details, the copies of your company registration and stuff. And then you're going to register your mm. company with that international database. Mm. So with this international, they're going to give us a number either has 13 digits, which is called EN13. EN? So 30. That it may be, that it's common that you normally sub, up, apply for around here. So we're going to apply for that number. Let me say you have 10 products. You have 100 ml of whatever product of milk, 500 ml, one liter. So you're going to apply, depending on how many products you are going to supply. So you're going to apply for that. You apply to who? To the called GS1. This GS1. So it's an international organization that regulates oh. barcoding. Where is it based? It's based in, we have, they have offices in South Africa, but it's from um, Europe, basically. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will remember the, the, the country. So the entire barcoding system, it's, including as far as China, the United States, mm -hmm. is centralized? It's centralized, oh. but we, we've got different numbers. So mm. if, let me say, people don't want to write made in China, they will use that number, that barcode number. So if you understand, if you understand how barcode works, you're able to know this product is from China because of the barcode number that it is being used. Mm -hmm. Like if you, can, if you have realized our code Fanta is not the 600 barcode. Normally start with five, something like that. Mm -hmm. So with that, you're able to know. 6,000, you mean? 6,000 6, is from our side. Yeah, okay. South Africa. And then the 500, depending where the country is, it, it, you know, it, it, it differs. Okay, let me yeah. ask you practically how it works. Suppose I'm able to, for argument's sake, design a chair like this, yeah. and I want it barcoded. barcoded. How, what, is the, what are the steps mm -hmm. that I have to do to have my products barcoded? Yes, so what happens is that we're going to help you to apply for the barcoding. So for you to apply, we need your information, the company, information so that you are registered and operating that for us is here is SIPA documents so sometimes we need the income tax to show that you know you are registered with brs and then we take those documents we apply for you mm -hmm. we write the information of the company there are forms that you fill mm -hmm. so then you're going to list, put, list the product that the, the, you are going to put the list of your products and then we send it to so that you can, you know, apply the, like your numbers are generated. It's, it's, it's the same as you do the ISBN here in Botswana. Mm -hmm. So ISBN with the Botswana National Library Services. Let's not assume anybody knows what, what that ISBN is. Can, is. can okay. you explain what that is? For example, if you are a writer, mm -hmm. the, the, the normal, you know, what happens in Botswana here. You have a writer, you go to Botswana National Library Services with your book, copy of your book. Mm -hmm. And once you get there, they're going to allocate a number for you. That number that you see in the books, you don't just take it somewhere, anywhere. It's regulated by Botswana National Library Services. So it's the same process with barcoding. You can just take a number and put and say it's a barcoding. Mm -hmm. Because when you go to the shops, it's not going to, you know, to what you call it, to scan. Mm -hmm. So with barcoding, what happens is that we apply for that number. So that number comes, and then for us, we do that symbol because it comes with just a number. And then we finish by doing it a symbol. So it becomes a scannable. A scannable, scannable barcode mm. because that number that comes is just an EN30 number, but together with the symbol of that lines, it's called a barcode. Mm -hmm. So then that's when you're going to be giving you, and then you're going to put in your packaging. Maybe so my chair will be what? It barcoded. Will be, it will be barcoded. Maybe At the put, back? Maybe, well, depending on where you put your sticker. Oh, okay. If, so that you put a sticker on yourselves. Yes. Oh. We can also do that. It's another process. Oh, okay. But the process of just getting back is just to get that number, 600, whatever number. Oh. And then we're able to put that symbol and give you as a soft copy. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you have to show originality? Do you have to show that 
you are the creator of that product to avoid people duplicating or barcoding other people's uh, inventions. Yes, that's how we need your, your, your company, what you call it, your company documents. Mm. So that in, in terms of if there's any argument or whatever that needs to be you know, argued or, or queried, we are able to know that this particular company is the one that applied for the barcoding. Mm -hmm. So but barcode, they're not supposed to share, even products, they don't share barcode. It's what unique I, to every product. So you need to every product. Every product, what I mean is that 500 ml milk, it has its own barcode. And then one liter, it has its own barcode. One liter of the same product. Mm -hmm. Two liter of the same product has its own barcode. So you can't take the 500 ml barcode to two liter bar, to two yeah. liter product. To the entrepreneurs who may be watching and thinking that this is so unnecessary, this is so irrelevant. What do you say? What are the advantages? What is the importance of barcoding? Yes, if you don't have barcodes, you are limiting your market because you cannot sell to any retail. And we have experienced, you know, some few challenges with our, our, our clients. So, like, for example, you apply for youth money to, for, to youth to, you know, so they can find you. And in your mm -hmm. quotation, you do not put the barcode because sometimes like you do without a proper research. You do not put a quotation for barcoding, only for you to do your packaging and everything and you are going to send the product to maybe to whatever retailer. What I pick and pitch or whatever it is that you go to. They'll be like, you don't have a barcode. And then you have to go back now and do a new package. So it's quite costly for you because when you get to the retailer, they're going to send you back because they can't take your product without your, your barcode. So some of your customers have suffered that embarrassment. Yes, they have. Mm. And it's and quite, ex quite expensive because, you know, packaging is expensive. Mm. So you can't say, I cancel and then put a barcode. So if you miss the point, you miss the, what you call it, where you have to put the barcode and when you get there, they're like, we can't take your product. And you, can't, you cannot supply the product without your, your labeling, mm. your packaging. Is that a government requirement or a tender requirement? No, normally it's with the suppliers. Suppliers, okay. Yes, yeah. What I mean is that if you're tendering for something or to supply government something, maybe uh, books for argument's sake, is it a requirement that the barcode for those books or whatever it is you're supplying should be disclosed i don't think but the government requires that mm. but from, from what i know is that for for you to sell to retailers just mm -hmm. private you can't but oh. brs they have their, their standards for labeling and packaging okay so barcode is one of these that was one of the standards that so you it's need important to for retailers for distribution yeah and also for the manufacturers the owners of the products oh okay it's very important for them to have a barcode okay yeah. now this may seem like an obvious question who can actually apply who qualifies to apply for a barcode? Yes, sir. Anyone who has a product that you have manufactured, you are qualified for a barcode. Mm -hmm. Because, and you are willing to distribute to retailers, you are willing to distribute to shops, you are willing to export it, you need a barcode. Can you give examples of products in Botswana that, that I, definitely need that, that, that you've come across that need barcodes? I don't know if we have, you know about this, uh, the yogurt that is you know, was produced in Botswana mm -hmm. by one of our clients. Mm. And then the, the, the what you call it, um, the, the total products that mm. our, that our, that our clients, mm. the Kalahari, the Botifik, if you recall, they do chemicals yes, that yes. our clients. And okay. many other Botswana that, that are doing gingers, that are doing, you know, different products, mm. whether gingers, mahi, whatever that, Cooking oil, we have helped a lot of clients as far as barcode are What about legally? Is it a legal requirement that you can only sell products that have been barcoded? For instance, if I mix my own ginger and I go into the street, am I allowed to distribute and sell? Or do I have to have a barcode first? No, you can you can sell. Like I was saying that you need to increase your, if you want to increase your market base to reach other you know, as, you know, another aspect of marketing, of market. Retailers, Retailers. and even internationally. Even internationally, you can't do that without a barcode. But in okay. terms of just selling, maybe to raise money that you're able to increase your, you know, to, to yeah. grow your business, that you can do. Mm -hmm. But Hala, if you want to take to, to retailers, you need a barcode. Um, you, you mentioned that retailers only take products that have barcodes. Yes, what is the reason for that? Why do they insist on having only products that are barcoded. Mm -hmm. Number one, it also helps them with inventory. Mm -hmm. So once you, they have a barcode, you are able to keep your inventory, knowing which product needs to be stocked, which product needs to expire when. So it helps them with that for retailers. Mm -hmm. And another thing, like I was saying, the barcode is all about identification and traceability. Mm -hmm. If you want to identify the product, you use the barcode. Mm -hmm. 
if you want to trace back the product, you use a barcode. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the, the most the basic importance of barcode for retailers. Okay. Yeah. Now, there are different types of barcodes. Can you give examples? Yes, there are different types of barcode. ISBN, like, like I said, the one that you normally put on your, on your books for, for authors. So for that number, they normally, my clients, what is it? They normally go to ISBN, then they get that number, normally start with a nine. So that number, once they get it, we are able to help them to, to, to put the symbol. So mm -hmm. that is called an ISBN. Mm -hmm. And also there is what you call EN. EN is a, the, so like I said, there are different types of barcodes, EN8, EN13. Sometimes others, they put, they have 12 barcodes. So depending on where you are doing barcodes, normally in Europe, they use 12 barcodes and then put zero before the number. So they're not uh, uh, categorized according to the types of products? No, they're not categorized according to the types of products. Okay. It depends with your, because they also have a barcode for packaging. Oh, I see. So it depends with your, now I will only need a barcode for this product because normally with the small barcodes at small products they use the E and eight because we can have the because the barcode it, it won't fit on a mm. small on a, in a bigger on a small product mm. so normally they use a small barcode now there's some who may be listening or watching who are interested in uh, exporting mm -hmm. uh, do you need barcodes for export purposes yes you really do need a barcode mm -hmm. because kind of like people are kind of sometimes issues about whereby the product has a, a challenge in terms of maybe, you know, it has whatever poison, food poisoning, you know, I might put it that way. Mm. So how do you trace back the product? Mm -hmm. So with a barcode, you're able to trace back the product. When it did arrive, you're able to, to know that with the barcode, able to know that the product, the, when was it supplied, things like that. Because it goes according to batches as well. It goes according to batches as well. Yeah. So that you're you can tell whether this, when this product was, was uh, packaged. Yes. Uh, this batch was packaged on such and such, yes. so you, that's how you trace back. Yes. Mm -hmm. So things like that, even though it's not that limited to that, but things like that, you're able to know and who are the manufacturers of those products, who are the owners of the products, things like that. So just okay. basically about issues of traceability and identification. Now, do barcodes have expiry dates? Mm -hmm. No, barcode does not have expiry. Does not have expiry date. We have what you call their lifetime. Mm -hmm. But for example, if you from when you buy ten or more, there's a subscription fee that you pay, ten barcodes. But if you just pay one one, there's no subscription fee that you pay. Mm -hmm. So the barcode are after they don't expire. At all. At all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Provided okay. your products are still going to be in the market, there's no they don't they don't expire. So how do how does that correlate with the expiry dates? Because you do most consumable products have to have expiry dates. Mm -hmm. So the the two don't Okay. Go together. Like I, I mentioned before, Botswana Bureau of Standard, they have a, what you call it, uh, standards for labeling. So if you're a manufacturer, you need to go and buy those standards. Mm -hmm. So they're got, they got, they different things that you need to meet. Mm -hmm. So the issue on the upper code is there. The issue of expiry, where you need to mention, to, to indicate when this, the product expiring is there. Mm -hmm. You need to indicate if your labeling has to be properly be able to be read. That those are things that are there on the standards. Mm. So barcode is one of the standards that you need to meet. The expiry is another standard that you need to meet. You know, you know sometimes even with edible products, uh, issues are what I want, the, the, the content, nutritional value and things like that. So there are different standards that you need to meet and barcode is one of those standards. All right, what I'm really curious about is knowing whether this uh, barcode in business is profitable, whether it's something that somebody can pursue as a career. Mm -hmm. So I, I I don't understand I don't I'm not sure if you are able to just do it as a barcoding barcoding because barcoding you can be incorporating different things you can maybe you can be a maybe a product product branding person as a product branding specialist so it's barcoding is part of branding mm. you know product branding you can also use barcode for different things you know it's only for just not just for products to retailers you can mm. also can also be used in offices in libraries give examples. From, for example, we have what you call asset management. Mm. To manage your asset, you can use a barcode. Because, for example, you know, these chairs, they are, they are the same. So if there's a chair that has missed, you are not able to know if there's a chair that is missing and stuff like that. So if you have barcoded your chair or your table or your computers, you're able to know what happens with this particular computer. As much as the computers, they have what you call it... Um, what you call it, there are unique numbers that comes with the manufacturer, but in terms of, if, if in terms of you need to know if your barcode or if your products have missed or are missing or whatever happens with the product, you're able to use that barcode to manage your asset with, the, with that barcode. 
and also in you know library service in, in what you call it in libraries you're able to barcode those books able to know what happens with that book so who, who has brought that book you know whatever that happens with your product so basically that's what barcode can do so it is not limited only to manufacturers and and what you call it and um suppliers mm. yeah. and how long is the whole process of barcoding take a barcoding it takes 24 hours to 48 hours is that quick it's quick mm. but it can it, it, it can you know be done there and there. the problem with us is that i think we are taking the service from south africa mm. so which means before the borders were closed we were able to you know to do the transaction that fast but mm -hmm. now we have to now you know deposit in the bank we don't know how long the, the process of the bank for the money to appear that and stuff like that but normally it doesn't take anything mm. Yeah. And normally, the, the people that you deal with uh, in terms of uh, the process of barcoding, what level entrepreneurs are they? Entry level to mm -hmm. seasoned entrepreneurs, or mm -hmm. yes, with with barcoding, we, we you know we have different clients, mm -hmm. established clients, starting you know the, the ones that are st startups mm -hmm. clients. You know, we have a different types. For example, if you have a juice. And you think that it has meet, you know, other other requirements whereby you need to check the nutritional value, everything is okay with the expiry date and stuff like that. And you want to take it to the retailers. We are able to help. Even if you have ten products that you want to distribute, you can be able to help you. Ten products, I mean, like one, two, three, four of the same product. We are able to help you. Mm. We also have an established business. Like I told you, Total is one of our clients. It's already running. It's have its own product. It's have you know different branches all over the world, and we are our clients. We got different clients. We have, you know, those that are, you know, already established as our clients. Because for you to have a pro to grow, you need a barcode. Mm. Because with there in the retailers, different clients, different, you know, what you call it, different uh, buyers, different mm. clients are there to see your products. So mm. if you are not barcoding your product, you are limiting yourself. You know. Now let's talk about affordability. How affordable is it for a startup, for instance, to? to start barcoding their products? Barcode, barcoding service is very, very affordable. Very, very affordable. It's less than 500 kuna. Very affordable. Per product? Per product. Per product, what I mean is that, let me say, like, the Gibua, my share 500 ml, whether you, you do 1 million of that, it mm. has the same barcode. Mm -hmm. And then my, my share for 1 liter, whether you do 1 million of it, it has a different barcode from the 500 ml. Mm -hmm. So per product, I mean, like, per, per 500 ml, one liter is another product. Because mm. yeah. even our clients, they normally have a challenge with that. You could want to say, maybe it's 500 pula. I think that 500 pula of one million of that product. Mm. No. Okay, as we come to the end of our time together, uh, Miss uh, Monacos, I'd really like for you to look at the camera, talk to the entrepreneur out there, first explain the importance of branding, and then give them some a message, a takeaway, mm -hmm. something that they can t go home with about this whole subject of branding okay what i can say is that we need to do our research as entrepreneurs know what is needed for your products you know for you to make money because for you to make profit because basically business is all about providing solutions that with commercial value so you know do a research don't like for example as i indicated that some of our clients they will find that they need a barcode while they have already you know spend money with you know a lot of you know a whole process they are branding so what I'm ask, what I'm asking for is that do your research. What is barcoding important? What importance of barcoding? How can I brand my product? How can I sell my product? How, what does it take for me to export? Different organizations that are there to help me, you know, like for for example, BITs. We know that they've export promotion. What can I do with those, you know, available organizations that can help me? Issues of mentoring. Who can I go to and ask about whatever that need to ask as far as my product or business is concerned? And another thing. You know, it's better that you grow. I know it's it's challenging. As much as you are facing a challenge, have a vision to grow. You know, it's, you know, some of us we've introduced another product. As much as we're not confident with, with growth, but we have introduced another service. We offer other IT services. We have RFID technology that we are offering. You know, different. You mean solutions. you've diversified around during uh, COVID? Uh, we have diversified around during COVID, and mm. we have introduced the same. You know, you know the the. the you know, things that are related to barcoding because barcoding, like I have mentioned, you can use it for different, you can provide it as a different, different solutions. For example, for asset management, we're going to use barcode for that. You know, we also have introduced the solutions for tender management. We know that a lot of services have been cancelled. 
because you know of this COVID. A lot of tendering, you know, deadlines have been cancelled because of this COVID. But with tendering solutions, as I said, that we have you know introduced, we are able to businesses to be able to. Can move. you do it remotely? You can do it remotely. You don't have to have people. They can just buy documents online, do prepare tenders, submit, able to see what you call it, the, the, what it is, what, who I have, who have, you know, won the tenders, things like that. You're able to know, know a lot of information about that tender that you have applied for. You mm -hmm. know, we've got different, you know, RFID technology, got different solutions that you're offering, and we are here to help you. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I have something that I've learned from the past years that I've been running a business. It's not How long easy. is that? It is since 2011. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not easy, but with tenacity, with, you know, determination we are able to you know to wait to, to fall and wake up mm. and rest up fall and rest up and to meet up your goals and reach up your goals so mm. thank you okay. for your time all right i was going to say can you share with the viewers your, your contacts your contact details how they can reach you yes we have a page in facebook called pam barcoding solutions and also my numbers are there, but I'll just share my numbers, 7253-6011 or 73-175-846. 7253-6011-73-175-846. Thank you. Okay, I think you should also encourage them to uh, subscribe to Mogobe Nuggets of Wisdom. Don't you think so? Yes. Because that's how we met. Yes. Yes, we met with Remo Kobe through that is a very wonderful platform. Like I was saying that you need knowledge. That is a very good platform for knowledge. That's a very good platform to, to be encouraged. You know, how others are making it, how others are not discouraged in the midst of these challenges whereby, you know, you pay rent and then you spend two weeks without using the office. And then what happens? You need to pay for the next month. What happens with this like that? You know, maybe you are into business, you are in your property, people are not coming because they are scared of how am I going to pay rent. So these are the platform whereby you need to be encouraged and be able to know, realize that others are doing it. Why am I not doing it? So, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you so much. All right. It remains for me to thank you, Ma. You're a, you. a pioneering young lady. We appreciate yes. that you have gone, you ventured it into an area yes. where yes. others maybe fear to tread. So congratulations and all the best in your business. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs>